is the grandest engine on Sodor. He puffs the fastest, steams the strongest, and pulls the express, which makes him very proud. One morning, Gordon huffed into the steamworks. He was grumpy. Good morning, Gordon, my friend. There's nothing good about it. The wheels on my express cars are wobbling and wibbling. And I have to be at Brendam by tea time to pick up the island inspector. No problem, Gordon. We fix wobbling wheels. Over there, please, next to Whiff and Scruff. Scruff has a scrunched scruncher. Gordon stared snootily. Whiff was whiffy. Hello, Hello Gordon. Gordon! Gordon sniffed sniffily. Hello. My name's Whiff, and this is Scruff the Scruncher. I know. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Gordon, I have a very important job for you. Of course, sir. Today is Clean Sodor Day. It will be a very busy day at Whiff's Waste Dump. Scruff's scruncher has scrunched. Whiff will wait with him here. So you, Gordon, must be in charge of Whiff's Waste Dump. Oh, what fun! Oh, what an honor! Oh, the indignity! Gordon didn't want to work at Whiff's Waste Dump. Gordon thought it was the smelliest place on Sodor. Good luck, Gordon! And Gordon huffed heavily away. Gordon steamed snootily into Whiff's waste dump. It was smelly. Oh, the indignity! Then, Gordon heard a worrying whistle. Bust my buffers! It's Spencer! I cannot let Spencer see that I'm working at the dump. He'll laugh till his boiler bursts. <gasps> I must hide. So Gordon shoved quickly away as Spencer slid smugly into the dump. Pumping pistons, what a pung! This is the pungiest place I've ever puffed to. Which pungy engine is in charge here? Gordon gasped and Gordon gulped. He hardly dared puff. I've left the Duke and Duchess's garbage to pong with all the rest. And Spencer steams snootily away. Gordon puffs slowly out of hiding. Oh, the indignity. Which Pongy engine is in charge here? I am not a Pongy engine. I am Gordon, fastest and best, and pulls the express. Just then, Gordon heard another whistle. Fizzling fireboxes! It's James. I cannot let James see that I'm working at the dump. He's the snootiest Sodor engine. I must hide. So Gordon chuffed quickly away as James huffed heavily in. Whiffy woo, what a mess! This must be the stinkiest spot on Sodor. Gordon shuddered and shuddered. Ugh, only stinky steamies work here. Oh, the indignity! I'm not a stinky steamy. 
I am Gordon, fastest and best, and pulls the express. Now I suppose I must shunt these whiffy wagons to the garbage crusher. Just then, Gordon heard a hoot. Flaming funnels! It's Diesel! I cannot let Diesel see that I'm working at the dump. He will tease me terribly. I must hide. So, Gordon shoved quickly away as Diesel boiled in. Smells and bells. Only a stinky steamy could leave all these stinky freight cars here. Gordon's rods rattled. Then there was trouble. Sir Topham Hatt arrived on Thomas, with Chuff behind with Scruff. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. With's waste dump was a mess. Garbage cars were everywhere. They hadn't been emptied into the garbage crusher, and Gordon was nowhere to be seen. Gordon, where are you? Gordon shuddered with shame. Here I am, sir. But try as he might, Gordon couldn't puff out to Sir Topham Hatt. All the tracks were blocked by freight cars. Oh, the indignity! No, Gordon. Oh, the silliness! On clean Sodor Day, no job was more important than to be in charge of Whiff's waste dump. Gordon stopped huffing and heaving. Sir, I have not been a really useful engine. I thought I was too grand to work with garbage, but I was being silly. Whiff, you are a very grand and important engine. Whiff was surprised. No one had called him Grand before. Don't worry, Gordon. I can help you. No, I can help you. I will shunt all these garbage wagons into the garbage crusher. Uh, please, sir, may Whiff pull the express car to Brendam Docks to pick up the island inspector? Yes, he can. Whiff thought his pistons would pop with pride. Thank you, Gordon. Right away, Gordon. Express coming through. I'll help you, Gordon. Thank you, Scruff. I'll huff and I'll puff till the whole dump is clean. You can do it, Gordon. So Gordon heaved and hauled. Scruff shunted and shoved. It was hard, hard work. It took a long, long time. But Gordon didn't give up. Later, Whiff's waste dump was tidy and clean. Then Whiff chuffed cheerfully in with Sir Topham Hatt and the island inspector. And this, sir, is Whiff's waste dump. Whiff is usually in charge. Today, he has been helped by Gordon. Very good work, Gordon. Very good work indeed. This made Gordon very proud indeed. Whiff whistled. Scruff cheered. Hooray! And Gordon glowed. Hooray for Clean Sodor Day! A job well done! I may be quite smelly, but it really was fun! Being Percy. It was a sunny day on the island of Sodor. The engines were huffing and chuffing as they clickety clacked along the tracks to Brendam Docks. The docks were busy. Frankie was creaky with crates, and Salty was shunting as Percy puffed in to collect the mail cars. Excuse me, Thomas. I excuse me, James. I must collect my cars on time. Thomas and James didn't move out of Percy's way. Percy tried again. Excuse me. 
If I'm late with my mail, I won't be a really useful engine. Just then, Gordon thundered into the docks. Out of my way! Express coming through! Salty moved out of Gordon's way. Percy saw this. I wish I was as loud as Gordon. Then everyone would chuff out of my way. Gordon collected his passengers. Then he huffed grandly away. Out of my way! Express coming through! This made an idea fly into Percy's funnel. I shall be as loud as Gordon. Then the other engines are sure to take notice of me. So Percy pumped his pistons and peeped as loudly as he could. Mail coming through! Thomas and James were surprised. Cinders and ashes! Flatten my funnel! It's Percy! And the two engines steamed swiftly out of Percy's way. Being loud made Percy feel very important. Percy liked feeling important. Now I shall be like Gordon. And Percy puffed proudly away. Percy clickety-clack cheerfully. I like being Gordon. It makes me feel bold. I'll do what I want to, not what I'm told. Then, Percy saw Toby on the track ahead. Toby was steaming slowly. Percy had to steam slowly, too. Percy didn't want to steam slowly. So, an idea popped into his pistons. Out of my way! Mail coming through! Toby was so surprised, he juddered and shuddered to a stop. But he didn't puff out of Percy's way. Hello, Percy. Percy was disappointed. Then, Percy saw Gordon clatter past on the express line. Out of my way! Express coming through! Fizzling fireboxes! Gordon is fast. I shall be fast! So at the next junction, Percy switched tracks. Now, he was on the express line. And with a whoosh and a whoosh, Percy whistled away like the wind. And like Gordon, Percy felt important. I like being Gordon. It makes me feel bold. I'll do what I want to, not what I'm told. Percy was going so fast on the express line, he raced straight through Maithwaite Station. Out of my way! Mail coming through! and left the mail sacks behind. Percy felt happy. He was fast. He was loud. I like being Gordon. It makes me feel bold. I'll do what I want to, not what I'm told. At Marin Station, Percy saw Alicia Botti on the platform. She was going to have dinner with Sir Topham Hatt. Hello, Percy. I'm waiting for Gordon to take me to Knapford. Percy felt loud. Percy felt fast. Percy felt he was just as good as Gordon. He could take very important passengers, too. Step inside my cab, Miss Botty. I will take you there in no time. And Percy whooshed away with Alicia Botty to Knapford Station. Percy felt proud. He was fast, he was loud, and he had a very important passenger. I like being Gordon. It makes me feel bold. I'll do what I want to, not what I'm told. And Percy raced and rattled right past Sir Topham Hatt. Then there was trouble. Gordon was roaring towards Percy. 
out of my way! Express coming through! Out of my way! Mail coming through! But Gordon didn't get out of Percy's way. Suddenly, Percy was worried. Oh, my! Oh, no! Oh, help! Whoa! Whoa! Gordon swerved and swayed into a siding. He bashed the buffers and toppled off the tracks. Percy felt terrible. Now, he didn't feel bold at all. He felt very silly. I'm sorry, Gordon. I want it to be you. I want it to be fast and loud and very important. But now you can't puff at all. And it's all my fault. Gordon grumped. Hmm. Percy puffed. I will put all of this right by just being Percy. Hmm. First, Percy took Alicia Botti to Sir Topham Hatt at Knapford. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, Miss Botti. I was trying to be Gordon, but I know that I'm only Percy. Next, he puffed into the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. Excuse me, James. I made Gordon derail. Would you pull Rocky with me to help Gordon? I'm not strong enough alone. James sniffed. Then, he felt sorry for Percy. Very well. Buffer up. And together, they heaved and hauled Rocky to help Gordon. Thank you, James. Thank you, Rocky. We must hurry now to pick up the mail. And Percy huffed and chuffed to pick up the mail sacks. Slowly, Percy steamed away to Knapford. I'm really just Percy. I'm small and I'm green. I'm silly, I'm slow. I don't want to be seen. Percy chuffed into Knapford. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. Percy's firebox fizzed with fear. Percy, why did you want to be Gordon? You're perfect being Percy, and that's what I want you to be. All the engines hooted and tooted in agreement, and Percy smiled. He was happy being Percy. James in the Dark The sun was setting at the end of another busy day on the island of Sodor. All the engines were very excited. Alicia Botti was to sing in the town square that evening. Sir Topham Hatt had a very special job for James. James, you will bring Alicia Botti, the mayor, and the Sodor Brass Band to the concert. Yes, sir. It will be very dark tonight. You must have a lamp fitted. Yes, sir. James puffed happily to the steamworks. Victor and Kevin were there. Hello, James, my friend. Your paintwork looks especially shiny. That made James very happy. That's because everyone must look their best for the concert tonight. Sorry, boss. Slip of the hook. A workman brought a lamp for James. James didn't like the lamp. This lamp will make me look silly. Everyone at the concert will look their best except me. The workman tried to fit the lamp to James's boiler. Then to his buffer. Then to his funnel. The workman had tried his best. 
But still, James did not like his lamp. It makes me look silly. I will not wear that silly lamp. And James puffed huffily out of the steamworks to pick up the very important visitors. Later at the next junction, James met an engine. The engine was Thomas. Thomas's lamp was shining brightly. Hello, James. Where's your lamp? It was dark now. James couldn't see which engine was there. Lamps just make engines look silly. Goodbye, Henry. I'm not Henry. I'm Thomas. But James didn't hear. He was already puffing away into the darkness. The evening became darker and darker. Now James could see even less. Then there was trouble. There was a station ahead. This is where I pick up Alicia Botti and the mayor. All aboard! But James hadn't picked up Alicia Botti and the mayor. He had picked up Farmer McColl and his prize cow. James hadn't seen them on the platform. It was too dark. James could hardly see anything. At the next junction, James met an engine. The engine was Edward. Edward had his lamp on. Hello, James. Where's your lamp? James couldn't see which engine was there. Lamps make engines look silly. Goodbye, Percy. I'm not Percy. I'm Edward. But James didn't hear. He was already chuffing into the darkness. The night was now very dark. This is where I pick up the Sodor Brass Band. But it wasn't the Sodor Brass Band. It was Farmer Trotter and his herd of prize pigs. All aboard! But James couldn't see them on the platform. James couldn't see anything. It was too dark. At last, James chuffed into the town hall. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. Here I am, sir. I have picked up all our very important visitors. James, what have you done? You have brought Farmer McCall and his cow and Farmer Trotter and his pigs. I was expecting Alicia Botti and the mayor. James felt terrible. Bust my buffers. I thought a lamp made me look silly. Now I really look silly. I'm sorry, sir. This is all my fault. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Please, sir, I will have my lamp fixed. Then I will race like the wind to deliver Farmer McCall and Farmer Trotter to Brendam. Later, I will pick up the very important visitors. Just then, Thomas puffed in. He had the workman with James's lamp in his cab. This time, James let the workman fit the lamp, and he didn't feel silly. Edward steamed in. Hello, James. Your lamp looks good. I know. Now I can see really well in the dark. But you are still late, James. James was worried. Then, an idea flew into his funnel. Sir, can Thomas and Edward pick up the visitors? And I will go to Brendam. That's a good idea, James. Then you must come straight back here. Yes, sir. So, James set off for Brendam Docks. His new lamp glowed brightly in the dark. 
James arrived at the docks just in time. Goodbye! Then, James pumped his pistons. He set off once more for the town hall. James chuffed happily along. Now, he could see everything in the dark. James liked having a lamp. I can see how beautiful Sodor looks at night. James puffed into the town square. Alicia Bati was singing sweetly. Then James gasped. There was another surprise. Thomas and Edward were using their strong lamps to light the concert. Please, sir, may I shine my lamp on Miss Bati? Then everyone will see her for miles around. Very well, James. Now, James didn't feel silly at all. He felt very, very important. And when Alicia Bati smiled at him, James couldn't have felt more proud of his bright, beaming lamp. Thomas's tall friend. The island of Sodor has many wonderful places to visit. Today was a special day. A new animal park was to be opened on Sodor. There were wide open spaces for the animals to live in. All the engines were very excited. Thomas puffed into Brendam Docks. He beamed from buffer to buffer. Good morning, Percy. Good morning, Thomas. Look at my special leaves to feed the animals. I have rosy red apples for the animals. And I am to take the mayor and Sir Topham Hatt to open the park. Do you have a special, Thomas? I am to take the tallest animal on Sodor up to the animal park. Percy and Edward gasped. What is it, Thomas? It's a giraffe. All the engines wished with wonder. They had never seen a giraffe before. Bizzling fireboxes, Mr. Giraffe. You are very tall. Edward, Gordon, and Percy were puzzled. Will he blow over? Why is he so spotty? Does he sit down? Of course he'll sit down. You must wait for the giraffe keeper. The giraffe will do what his keeper tells him. But Thomas didn't want to wait for the giraffe keeper. He wanted to show the children the tallest animal on Sodor. Don't worry, Cranky. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him. And Thomas puffed proudly out of the docks. Thomas and the giraffe puffed happily along. Children waved and whooped and Thomas's firebox fizzed with excitement. Thomas slowed as he puffed to a low bridge. Sit down, Mr. Giraffe. The giraffe didn't want to sit down. He wanted to see the sights of Sodor. Thomas wished. Then he heard a familiar whistle. It was Gordon. He was taking the mayor and Sir Topham Hatt to the animal park. 
Out of the way! Express coming through! I can't go under the bridge with Mr. Giraffe. This made Gordon grumpy. You must go back to the docks for the keeper. The giraffe will do what the keeper tells him. No thank you, Gordon. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him. So, Gordon huffed huffily away. But Thomas didn't know how to make the giraffe sit down. Thomas saw some cows. They munched merrily, then lay lazily in the sun. Edward chuffed up. An idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Edward, can Mr. Giraffe eat some of your apples? Why, Thomas? Because then he will feel sleepy and lie down. Edward was puzzled, but he wanted to help his friend Thomas. Thank you, Edward. The giraffe liked Edward's rosy red apples. He liked them so much, he ate and ate and ate. And he didn't sit down. Edward was upset. Bubbling boilers! You must go back to the docks for the keeper. The giraffe will do what the keeper tells him. No, thank you, Edward. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him. But Thomas was worried. Sir Topham Hatt and the mayor would be waiting at the animal park. Then, Percy puffed past. Hello, Thomas. What's the matter? Mr. Giraffe won't sit down. Can he eat some of your leaves? Then he's sure to want to lie down and sleep. Percy was happy to help his best friend Thomas. The giraffe liked Percy's leaves. He thought they were a wonderful game. Leaves flittered and floated through the air until there were none left at all. Cinders and ashes! I only wanted you to sit down, Mr. Giraffe. Suddenly, the giraffe did sit down, and he closed his eyes. Mr. Giraffe's asleep, Percy. We must steam straight to the animal park. So, Thomas and Percy clickety-clacked along the track and under the bridge to the animal park. Then there was trouble. The mayor and Sir Topham Hatt were cross. They had waited a long time for the tallest animal on Sodor. But the tallest animal on Sodor was fast asleep. Wake up, Mr. Giraffe, please! But the giraffe slept on. This is a disaster, Thomas. Thomas felt terrible. There were no rosy red apples, no juicy leaves, and no wide awake Mr. Giraffe. I know, sir. It is a disaster. I should have waited for the giraffe keeper. I was silly to think Mr. Giraffe would do what I told him. I'll puff my hardest to the docks and bring the keeper here. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away. The giraffe keeper was at the docks. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, sir. All aboard! The giraffe was still asleep when Thomas puffed into the animal park. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will wake up now you're here, sir. And then Thomas chuffed away. He had a lot to do. At Farmer McCall's farm, Thomas picked up more rosy red apples. And from the orchard, more juicy leaves. At last, Thomas puffed 
and Shuff and Huff back to the animal park. Everyone was cheering and clapping Sodor's tallest animal. Mr. Giraffe, you're awake! The giraffe heard Thomas's toot. He stretched his long neck up, 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 and then down to Thomas's face. Welcome to Sodor, Mr. Giraffe. Merry Winter Wish. It was the winter holidays on the island of Sodor. All the engines were excited. That evening, Knapford Station was going to be decorated with lots of winter lights. There were to be red lights, green lights, sparkling lights, and even snowflake lights. Thomas chuffed into Brendam Docks. All the engines were huffing and puffing busily. Salty rolled over. He had some important news. The engines liked important news. A ship will arrive from the mainland. It'll deliver a special winter holiday light for Knapford Station. It will be the biggest light of all. The engines wished with wonder. What's the light called? It is called the Star of Knapford. It's a very special star. If an engine passes by it, they can make a wish. Then maybe, just maybe, their wish will come true. The engines were very excited. They couldn't wait to see the Star of Knapford. Just then, Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, you must wait here. You will have a special to deliver. Yes, sir. Thomas's axles tingled and trembled. A special was best of all. Thomas watched and waited. Then, his special arrived. Shiver me timbers, Thomas! Look at that! Cranky lowered the Star of Knapford gently onto a flatbed. The star sparked and sparkled. It looked wonderful. Thomas, you will pull the Star of Knapford to Knapford Station. Thomas was excited. He thought his pistons would pop. Bubbling boilers! I can't wait to tell my friends about my special. So Thomas buffered up to the Star of Knapford. Then he chuffed cheerfully off to Knapford Station. Thomas puffed proudly to a junction. The star of Knapford shimmered on his flatbed. Then Thomas saw Percy chuff across the bridge above. An idea popped in Thomas's pistons. I'm sure Percy would like to make a wish. Then maybe, just maybe, Percy's wish will come true, just like Salty said. So Thomas didn't take the track to Knapford Station. He puffed quickly to follow Percy. At last, Thomas was side by side with Percy. Percy, Percy, I have the Star of Knapford on my flatbed. Percy was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes! Are you taking the Star to Knapford Station? Yes, Percy. After you have made a wish. So Thomas pulled the star alongside Percy. Percy looked at the star. Then he closed his eyes tight. I made a wish. Thank you, Thomas. That made Thomas very happy. Now I must hurry. Next, Thomas saw Henry chuffing cheerfully. I'm sure Henry would like to make a wish. So Thomas wished and whistled away to follow Henry. Thomas raced after Henry, all the way to Tidmiss Sheds. Henry saw the star of Knapford on Thomas's flatbed. His boiler bubbled brightly. Oh, Thomas, you're lucky. Are you taking the star to Knapford? Yes, Henry. After you have made a wish. 
So Henry closed his eyes. I made my wish. Thank you, Thomas. That made Thomas even more happy. Hooray! I hope all my friends' wishes will come true. Thomas chuffed on to Knapford Station. James puffed quickly past. I'm sure James would like to make a wish. So Thomas raced after James. Thomas chased James all the way up Gordon's Hill. Then there was trouble. Thomas rattled and raced down the hill. Stop, James! Thomas's flatbed jiggled and joggled. The star of Natford wiggled and wobbled. Thomas was worried. Cinders and ashes, this is fast! Thomas applied his brakes. His wheels squawked and squeaked. Sparks flickered and flashed. At last, Thomas screeched to a stop. The star of Knapford flew high into the sky. It floated and flickered right over James and Henry and Percy. Then crashed with a crunch and a crack onto the track in front of Thomas. Thomas gasped. The star is broken. Now my friend's wishes might not come true. And it's all my fault. Thomas was upset. How can I get the star to Knapford now? Sir Topham Hatt and the other engines will be waiting. Thomas decided to make a wish. Maybe, just maybe, my wish will come true. Thomas closed his eyes. I wish that one of my friends would come to help me. Suddenly, Percy, Henry, and James whooshed towards him. Thomas's wheels wobbled with wonder. We saw the star of Knapford fly high in the sky. Are you all right, Thomas? Thomas looked at his friends. Then he looked at the broken star. I have been a very silly engine. I wanted you all to make wishes, so I didn't go straight to Knapford. I puffed too far and too fast. Please, will you help me? Thomas's friends were happy to help. Percy watched the star. Henry fetched workmen to fix it. And Thomas and James found Rocky. They huffed him quickly to the star. Soon, the workmen had fixed the star. Rocky lifted it carefully back onto Thomas's flatbed. Thank you all. Now we must hurry to Knapford. So, together, the engines wheeshed and they whooshed across Soto. They arrived just in time. Everyone watched as Rocky put the star of Mapford high above the station. Then they clapped and cheered as the star was switched on. It shimmered and shone brightest of all. Thank you, Percy, Henry, Rocky, and James. I'm very lucky to have you all as friends. I'm sorry that your wishes didn't come true. Mine did. I wished that we'd all be together under the star of Knapford. So did I. So did I. Thomas smiled from footplate to fender. His friend's wishes had come true. And that made Thomas happiest of all. Thomas's crazy day. The engines on the island of Sodor always like to be busy. They like to be really useful. And they like to have fun. One morning, Thomas chuffed cheerfully into the steamworks. He had come to see his best friend, Percy. Percy had popped a piston. Hello, Percy. Hello, Thomas. Thomas could see his friend look sad. Cheer up, Percy. Victor will soon have you fixed. 
But I can't be really useful here. And if I'm not really useful, I can't have fun. Percy, my friend. No more long faces, please. You look like a squeezed lemon on wheels. I will have you fixed by lunchtime. That made Percy smile. Don't worry, Percy. I'll puff back for you. And we can play then. So Thomas clickety-clack off on the track to see Sir Topham Hatt. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting for Thomas at Knapford Station. So were Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand, the Misty Island engines. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand giggled and jiggled. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Hello, Thomas. Thomas. We're happy to see you. That's right. <clears throat> and I, Thomas, have a very important job for you. Thomas puffed with pride. Yes, sir. I want you to work with Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand at Brendam Docks. There is important freight to be loaded by the end of the day. You must show them how to be really useful engines. Of course, sir. Lead the way. We're right behind you, Thomas. That's right. <whistles> But Thomas's firebox flickered and fizzed. Oh my. I told Percy I would play with him. And I don't want to disappoint Percy. But if I play with Percy, Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand will think I'm not a really useful engine. Then an idea flew into his funnel. I can play with Percy and I can show Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand how to be really useful. I'm sure I can do that. That made Thomas's boiler bubble brightly. Thomas puffed into Brendam Docks. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand whistled and whooped. They had never seen anything as exciting as this. There are so many ships, so many tracks. That's right. Who's oh, he? This is Cranky. Cranky creaked crossly. He's a crane. That's right. Then an idea popped into Thomas's pistons. Cranky, this is Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand from Misty Island. Please tell them about the docks. I have to chuff away. I will be back very soon. And before Cranky could creak again, Thomas had steamed out of the docks. Percy was waiting for Thomas outside the steamworks. Hello, Percy. Let's play hide and seek. Your turn to hide. Percy's firebox fizzed. He liked playing hide and seek with Thomas. Make sure you find a good hiding place. Don't peep until I find you. Then Thomas raced away to the docks. Cranky was cranky. Hello, Thomas. Cranky doesn't want to talk at all. That's right. It's not my job to talk to engines. Now Thomas was cross. Cranky, you know all about loading freight. Please help Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand. I must do something important. Then I will puff back. Cranky didn't like being told what to do. He creaked and he cranked. But Thomas had already whooshed away. Thomas whirred and whooshed. Must find Percy. Must have fun. Must load freight till the job's well done. Thomas was too busy worrying and whooshing to see Percy. Percy was hiding. Percy was trying not to peep. Can't find Percy. Must go back. Must make sure the freight's on track. So Thomas raced and rattled back to the docks, where Thomas could not believe his eyes. Cranky was luring Ferdinand onto the deck of a mighty steamship. Ferdinand wasn't happy. This is not right. 
Thomas was upset. Cranky, what are you doing? Cranky crackled. You said, help them. Load freight. Thomas was horrified. I didn't mean load engines. Maybe not. You weren't here to ask. Thomas felt terrible. Unload Ferdinand now, please. Then Thomas felt worse. Cinders and ashes! Percy won't be having fun at all! And Thomas wished like the wind out of the docks. Thomas clickety-clacked past Percy's track. Percy! Percy! Where are you? Percy was sad. I'm here, Thomas. You didn't try to find me. You didn't play. This is no fun at all. Now Thomas felt worse than ever. The freight wasn't loaded. Bash Dash and Ferdinand would think he wasn't really useful. And worst of all, Thomas had upset his best friend, Percy. I can't do two things at the same time. Percy was puzzled. What do you mean, Thomas? Thomas thought, and he thought. Then, a much better idea flew into his funnel. Percy, we're going to have fun at the same time as being really useful. Follow me. Thomas and Percy puffed into the docks. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand were waiting. We can show you that really useful engines are really fun ones. Thomas and Percy huffed and puffed. First you watch, and then you wait. Then you hold your car so straight. Never hurry, take your time. One by one, you'll have a line. Then you know you've done your best. You've passed the really useful test. <laughs> we'll try our best. We'll have a bash. <laughs> we'll take our time. We'll never dash. <laughs> we'll huff and puff with all our might. Hooray for you. You've done it right. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun, Thomas. That's right. Thomas beamed from buffer to buffer. Being really useful is the most fun of all. And even Cranky had to agree with that. <laughs> <laughs>
the twistiest and turniest tracks to Marin Station. Then you'll see just how much fun I can be. I'm ready, Eddie! So Edward puffed away to Marin Station, with Charlie chuffing close behind. First, Edward and Charlie clickety-clacked along the bumpiest tracks. They jiggled and joggled, and they bumped and they jumped. Wee-hee-hee! This is fun! Next, Edward and Charlie rattled round some of the bendiest bends. Fizzling fireboxes! I didn't think you'd be this much fun, Edward! This made Edward happy. Edward and Charlie rocked and they rolled. They giggled and jiggled. And they told jokes. Okay, Charlie, I have a joke for you. How do you know when an engine is eating? Uh, I don't know, Eddie. Tell me. You hear it? Chewing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Eddie. You really are the most fun of all. At last, Edward and Charlie puffed into Marin Station. Thomas was there, but there was no mechanic on the platform. Hello, Edward. The mechanic was waiting for you. Now he's left on Bertie the bus. Suddenly, Edward was worried. Oh, my. I spent too much time on the bumpy and bendy tracks having fun. Charlie sighed. Is that as much fun as you could be, Edward? Edward didn't like that. No! I can be much more fun than that. We'll chase Bertie the bus to catch up with the mechanic. Good idea! I'm ready, Eddie! So, Edward and Charlie pumped their pistons and chuffed off for the chase. Edward and Charlie raced and chased after Bertie the bus. They thundered through crossings. They flew over bridges. And they clattered through tunnels. But Edward and Charlie couldn't catch up with Bertie. Flat my funnel! That was fun! Now, Edward was even more worried. He had not done his job. Sir Topham Hatt would be cross. I think we should stop at the next junction. Then we can ask the signal man to send a message to the mechanic. I was right. You are too old to be fun. Edward didn't like that. Then an idea flew into his funnel. We'll take Sir Topham Hatt's car to the steamworks to be fixed. It's always fun there. Charlie was surprised. Bubbling boilers, Edward! That will be the most fun of all! I'm ready, Eddie! So, Charlie and Edward puffed off to the steamworks. Charlie and Edward steamed in. Hello, Kevin. Where's Victor? Hello, Edward. Victor has gone to pick up a part. Can I help? I'd like you to fix Sir Topham Hatt's car. Kevin was surprised. Sling my hook. We don't fix cars. I'm sure you can. We will be back later to pick up the car. Edward, you're not too old to have fun. You're the most fun of all. That made Edward very happy. Later, Charlie and Edward returned. Kevin was very excited. Here you are, Edward! Kevin trundled to one side. He giggled giddily. <laughs> there was Sir Topham Hatt's car with a funnel on its roof. It's a fun funnel! Edward gasped. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt arrived. He didn't think the funnel was fun at all. Edward, what have you done to my car? Edward felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. I was trying to be really useful and really fun. 
But it has all gone wrong. This is a disaster. I wish I had just been really useful. So do I, Edward. Please, sir. I can take you and Lady Hat this evening. Then, tomorrow morning, your car will be fixed. Very well, Edward. Edward had puffed into Knapford Station with Sir Topham and Lady Hat. Charlie was there. Hello, Eddie. I'm ready for more fun. Not now, Charlie. It's not the time for fun. It's the time to be really useful. I have to hurry to the steamworks. Edward puffed into the steamworks. Charlie chuffed close behind. Would you like to hear another joke, Edward? No, thank you, Charlie. This isn't the time for jokes. I have to collect Sir Topham Hatt's car. Kevin, please take the funnel off Sir Topham Hatt's car. It was fun, but it wasn't really useful. Right, boss. Uh, Edward, whatever you say. Thank you, Kevin. Later, Edward puffed out of the steamworks with Sir Topham Hatt's car. It was as good as new and funnel free. All along the track, as Edward clickety clacked, children whistled and waved. This is fun. And Charlie had to agree. <laughs>